I'm 52, and I have been an entrepreneur since 1990. Um, I was 26 or 27 years old then when I quit my job. And uh, prior to that, I was working in marketing uh, for a couple of years. Um, I was uh, uh, the, the, uh, in, in brand management. Uh, I was working on Holix. Uh, before that, I, was, uh, I went to business school at IMM Ahmedabad, and before that, I worked in advertising for three years. So I grew up in Delhi. Um, most all my schooling, my college, I went to St. Stephen's College in Columbus School. Uh, and uh, then I you know, decided to work for a few years in advertising and then went to do my MBA. My father was in government. Uh, my mother's a homemaker. And so we grew up in government colonies, um, you know, a, a typical, usual middle class upbringing where your parents told you that, look, uh, you know, you have nothing to inherit, so you study hard. And the only thing we can give you is a good education. And after that, it's up to you. And which is what uh, you know uh, we all did. We studied hard, and we tried to get into good colleges, and, and we managed, and we somehow got by. Uh, so we were not brought up to be entrepreneurs. Indian, the Indian middle class does not bring up its children to be entrepreneurs. It brings them up to study hard, get into good colleges, get qualified, and then work in a good organization, whether government or private, uh, and then seek a career as an employee. But somewhere along the way, uh, I was not too satisfied with that prospect. And therefore, I began to think about entrepreneurship. And finally, at the age of 26 or 27, I took the plunge and quit my job and uh, uh, decided to do a couple of small things with a, with a friend. So we started life uh, you know, as, as an entrepreneur with about 2,000 rupees of capital. That's 1,000 each. And uh, we were operating out of the servant quarter above the garage uh, in my father's house. And uh, we had, uh, you know, essentially we did small things, salary surveys, databases, some small time consulting, whatever came our way, uh, some teaching, some training, some writing, uh, anything to survive. So for the first seven years, I drifted and did a whole lot of small stuff, maybe 30, 40 different things over seven years. Um, but, uh, you know, this taught me a lot because I, 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 I got many, many, many different skills. And all of these came together when finally we launched Nokri. And uh, so Nokri started off as a small idea in 97. There were only 14,000 internet accounts in the country then. Um, I saw the internet for the first time at an IT exhibition called IT Asia in Pragati Madan in Delhi. And I was taken up by it, by the concept of uh, being able to access information across geographies, uh, you know, which was on, which were on remote computers. And I thought that if one were to take jobs from vacancy ads in print media and compile them and put them together in one place. Uh, it could be a useful thing that people would like. And that's what we began to do. We began to get uh, newspapers uh, from around the country, uh, 29 newspapers that carried appointment ads. And we would uh, take the appointment ads, rehash them in our own words, put them into a database, and put them up on the internet. Uh, you know, We had said a minimum 1,000 jobs at any point in time would be live and current. Um, you know, and we'll update the site twice a week. Uh, in those days, we didn't have the kind of infrastructure we have today. We had uh, dial-up access, we had a shell account access, no TCPIP access, we had monochrome monitors. Uh, you know, we had to sit up till 3 o'clock in the morning um, just to get a stable connection so we can update the site. And we used to update it ourselves personally from our, from our residences. So it was a, you know, a really bootstrapping, but uh, the site became popular and we began to get traffic and all of this without advertising. Right? We didn't have money to advertise. And um, as the site got traffic, we got noticed by the HR community and by companies and people began to call us up and say, can we put up a job which we not advertise in the paper? And for those kind of listings, we began to charge money. Small money, uh, 350 rupees a job listing, uh, you know, uh, to start with. But um, I think in the first year, we did about two and a half lakh rupees uh, sales. But in the second year, this, you know, sales multiplied seven times. And that's when we figured that maybe we've stumbled upon something that could be big or could become big. And so we stopped doing everything else and we said we are just an internet company. So by end of 98, we had decided we are an internet company. And we will only do Nokri uh, and we will only do jobs and this is who we are. And in the year 2000, uh, we got a break uh, where we were able to raise venture capital from ICICI Venture. Uh, well, uh, a modest amount compared to today's sums of money. Uh, we raised about $1.7 million for 15% of the company. It was a bubble valuation. We got lucky. And uh, we raised the money, 
and the market melted down almost immediately thereafter. We stuck it through the, the meltdown. We made it up the hard way. We, we were very careful of how we spent the money. We you know, hired salespeople, built new products, technology servers, moved the office out of the house, uh, but into the back lanes of Noida, uh, at a, paying 10 or 11 rupees a square foot rent, uh, among rubber and chemical factories uh, with open drains. So it was not a posh office from the outside, but we had spent money on the interior. So once you were inside the office, the employees felt they were in a world-class environment. And from there, we grew the company. Uh, we made losses for two years after raising venture capital because the cost had gone up. But uh, within two or three years, we had uh, scaled the company 35 times in sales and had broken even and made a small profit. And from there on, uh, we did not look back. Uh, we doubled, or perhaps more than doubled turnover every year for the next several years. And finally, we listed the company uh, in 2006 in India. Along the way, we diversified into matrimonial classifieds, into real estate classifieds, education. And we also then um, uh, invested in external startups, such as Zomato, Merit Nation, Policy Bazaar, Maidala, and several others. So today, we have reasonably, reasonably diversified. In addition, we've got investments in other internet companies. Uh, the company today employs about 4,000 people. We have offices in 41 cities all over India. We have an operation in the Middle East. So it's a, the company has grown fairly well. And it is a reasonably large uh, company for the internet sector in India right now. So I think in good times, everyone is a good entrepreneur. But an entrepreneur's true metal is tested when times get tough. Uh, since I quit my job in 1992 to now, this is my fifth or sixth business cycle. And each time I have seen that, look, if you you keep a tight control of your costs, uh, if you're frugal, uh, and you don't lose that part of your DNA, even no matter how profitable and large you are, uh, I think uh, you will come through any meltdown with ease. Just keep focusing on the customer, keep on improving the offering, uh, make sure you're better than competition, and, and, and you'll be fine. So I think uh, in the year 2000, we went through a meltdown, post-launching Nokri. In the year 2008, there was a correction. Um, then there was a recovery for a year or two, and now again, then, then again, there was a slowdown until 2014. So since Nokri has been launched, it's the third or fourth slowdown. And uh, I think each time we have sort of come out of a slowdown in a stronger position uh, uh, than we went into it. And that's largely because we have stuck to the knitting and we focused on the customer and we focused on product innovation and we have not cut investments into the brand or into the product or into product development. I think that's important. So recessions come, uh, they make you stronger, they test you. I think. Uh, the whole world economy is going through a period of slow growth. Uh, within that, I think India seems to be shining like a beacon. Uh, it is not up to the expectations that Indians have of themselves. But in comparison to the rest of the world, I think uh, we are doing reasonably well. Uh, I do believe uh, that with uh, the right fiscal policies and fiscal stabilization, which has happened, uh, you know, I, I, I do believe the next two years uh, should show better growth. And when that happens, I think uh, the tide will lift all, all boats. We are the leading job site in the market with 70% traffic share. With uh, you know, uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a slow economy, we are growing at 20% per annum, which is pretty good. Uh, so, so you know, um, so this is this, so you know, all of this gives us confidence that we will continue to grow in future, as will all good companies uh, as the Indian economy grows. I think the. Entrepreneurial ecosystem in India has uh, undergone a sea change in the last 25 years since uh, I started out as an entrepreneur. Um, you know, in those days, uh, if you were a qualified person uh, and not from a business family, you were unlikely to get into your own business. You were being trained to join a good company, a multinational. Uh, and therefore, it was really the oddballs and the mavericks who became, uh, and they struggled. They struggled a lot. Uh, there was no venture capital. There was no support system. Uh, many people would not have had family support for this decision. Uh, people would ask my parents what's wrong with him. He went to I'm Ahmedabad and now he's quit a, a good job in a multinational to do what? To earn 2,000 rupees a month. Um, so today, uh, when I go to speak in college campuses and I ask students how many of you would like to become an entrepreneur at some point in time, maybe 30-35% of the hands go up. So entrepreneurship as a career choice has become mainstream. Uh, there is venture capital, there is risk capital, there are organizations like TIE who support and mentor entrepreneurs, there is the Indian Angel Networks and other Angel Networks. 
so there is there is a whole community of entrepreneurs, you know, and you know, it, it, therefore it's less lonely than it used to be. So I think all these things are really important, uh, and I think the, with the thriving ecosystem, it should do well. The government has also come out with policies regarding startups. The government has recognized the importance of startups. I think that's really important, uh, and that should go a long way in, in encouraging startups. So I think um, every entrepreneur, uh, you know, would like to help other entrepreneurs who are younger than him, who are newer than him, who are struggling perhaps, uh, you know, uh, simply because you've been there and you know what it's like, and you would like to help. At the same time, we must recognize that there is no such thing as entrepreneurship made easy, right? Uh, you've got to go through a struggle. You've got to go through a pain. You've got to do the foot slogging. You've got to go through the bootstrapping and being frugal and not having enough money. Because if you don't go through that, you will not be tested enough to actually succeed. Okay, and that's what will keep you going in a difficult environment. Because as an entrepreneur, you know, success will come over five years or 10 years. Uh, during that time, there'll be good times and there'll be bad times. And you've got to have it in you to last through the bad times, otherwise you will quit. Uh, and therefore, you know, you will have to go through the struggle yourself because that is required. Now, what do we look for in entrepreneurs and companies? We look for, I think, the quality of our team, and that's really important, uh, followed by the quality of the idea that they're chasing. Uh, is it solving an unsolved problem? Are they solving an unsolved problem? Because if you're solving an unsolved problem, you know, your risks go down, your chances of success goes up, uh, your customers come to you to buy, you don't have to go to them to sell, and all of this matters. So we look at these two things. Beyond that, of course, the standard stuff like potential market size, has it succeeded anyway overseas, uh, you know, uh, what's the competitive scenario like, okay? Uh, so so these, these things. Uh, when I see the quality of the young entrepreneurs, okay, the guys who are 30, 31 and have an ambition to run a global company, uh, I think they are much, much smarter than I was when I was 31. So I think the quality of entrepreneurs is getting better and better. Uh, our benchmarks are now global. Um, you know, we have been exposed to the rest of the world. Uh, young people have been, and therefore they have global ambitions. And they're audacious. Um, and I think many of them will succeed. And uh, so it's always, uh, you know, the way of the world that the next generation is better than the previous one. And that's how progress happens. So I'm happy to say that the guys who are 25 and 30 are smarter than most of us who are in the 50s.